Y'all know I'm spitting the truth And I be up in this room With a political or cynical I'm speaking to you like you do, do. 3.0 Underground hero With your beating heroes They heard of me in Germany I'm permanently embedded in this I'm minimalist I give them a twist Was underrated Now I don't give a shit I'm on a path to my success How about even get rid uh, sir, introduce yourself. Slug from Atmosphere, what's up? Ooh, slug, man, you looking like slimmer than, than uh, last time I seen you had a belly. How'd you get rid of that? Ant's been, uh, you know, having me on the regiment. Oh, okay. Uh, who put you on the regiment? Oh, Ant. Well, Ant had got a little tummy, too. I put him on the regiment. Oh, 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 is he, he got an eight pack like Grouch? Nine. Nine pack. Uh, dude, this is, uh, this is the found, this is the, um, he is the king of the underground scene for backpack rappers and stuff. He's called Sluggy from Atmosphere, and he's killing it. What's the, what's the name of your new album? Um, looking like late October. Looking like late October. That's the release. What's the name of it? Whether or not. It's called Whether or Not. It's coming out. What label? Rhyme Sayers. Rhyme Sayers. So when you see this face. Even though he doesn't like to make love songs, I don't know why, because hella girls like him and shit, but we had an argument about people's, be but people's best songs being, or uh, biggest songs being love songs. Like, just name a group. Their biggest song is a love song, except for MF Doom. You can't bring up MF Doom. <laughs> MF Doom's, not name a group. Uh, Give me a group. Uh, oh, that's fucking tough. <laughs> you got me. Run the Jewels is not making no love songs. But Killer Mike do fuck with the strip club, and he's married, and LP's down there married, too. Shouts out to Run the Jewels. Um, give me not, somebody else whose biggest song is not a love song. Biggest song, not a love song, is um, Yag Fu Front. <laughs> this nigga said Yag Fu Front. These niggas don't know who that is. Oh, somebody else. All right. Um, Dilated Peoples. Worst skips the worst. As my peoples come first, that's a love song. Oh, no, to a woman, though. Uh -huh. To a woman, though. You could if you had nails like this, double rainbow. What does it mean? Uh, can you explain to me what you just rolled up there? Why did it look like you had some tree bark in that shit, nigga? <laughs> nigga, you smoke tree bark, nigga? What's wrong with you, bro? Why can't you just smoke weed, man? Why? Because I went to Europe, and I got turned out by the Europeans. Smoking tobacco on the weed. That's the wacky tobacco you put in the weed and shit. It's called a spleef, right? Yeah, because you know why? Because the Europeans, they just, they don't smoke to like, yeah. to get all fucked up. It's more like having some coffee or tea and, and you relax. So you don't like hit it all hard like we do. And that's why they mix it with tobacco because it's kind of like whatever. We take that shit super serious. Serious and too far, nigga. I like weed, but I hate weed niggas, man. I call them canatards because they're canatards. And they smoke that shit and they get all dumb and shit. That's why they canatards. One last thing, bro. Um, I didn't catch your set, but I saw footage and I saw you brought Enzo on stage and he was like that. Did you rehearse that or not? I've never rehearsed it. He's a... Uh He's around it all the time, man. So I'm going to go in here and say ahead of the books, Enzo is going to be a sick-ass MC, maybe? Or doctor or what? Uh, Scientist? I would like him to play baseball. Enzo, the, oh, did you play baseball? Nigga, what position? I play pitcher and catcher. I play pitcher and catcher because I play catcher because he controlled the game, and I like to control the game. Wink, wink. What can I say? Right. Give much love to this man for bringing Enzo out. I say he won the night. No matter what anybody else does, Enzo coming out stage and that footage of him and you rapping to him, that shit warmed my heart, bro. It was, it's, I, uh, I haven't processed it yet, but I will later. And one last thing. Am I crazy? I honestly don't think Lucky I Am is crazy. A little misunderstood sometimes. And um, maybe all those years of wiling out, maybe like finally coming out of your pores a little bit, so you kind of like sweating out some craziness. Shout out to I'm sweating out the cocaine. I used to do hell amounts of cocaine. Nigga, I don't do cocaine no more, and now I'm a little bit more turnt now. I, nigga, if I was on cocaine, nigga, you, I'd be way I'd be way more mellow. Nigga, because, nigga, when I used to do cocaine, bro, you know when I do cocaine? I, my homie was the, was the plug, so he just bring me free coke, and know what I do? I do it at home by myself and do chores. By myself, I'm not. A, I wasn't a social. And uh, my house was cleaner. And shout out to Luck. Love this dude. Make noise for evidence. That's the nigger horn. All right, I'm out, y'all. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? I'ma say it like this, nigga. 
This is my nigga right here. And I'm gonna let you know this. The shit that you did is inspiring with radio because you was first. This nigga was first. This nigga did his damn thing and he made the shit come tight. Radio personality right here. Man. I mean, we. It was just niggas. We've been funny like forever. We've been, talking, we've been funny we've been, for niggas. We was made for cameras. We was made for cameras. Introduce yourself, nigga. Your boy from Living Legends, Aesop, the Black Wolf, Black Aesop. Back, back, back. Put your hand backwards too. Also, also, also the OG Aesop with with the young with the young taco hat from Fresno. You know what I'm saying? We all Living Legends. He from the F. He from the F. Hey, nigga. Uh, did you know niggas like um, Fashan and them growing up? Uh, yup. My young Fashan out there, young Asia, you know what we do out there. But this dude right here is the original. This dude right here, I, I used to sneak in the shows way back. Remember? Woo! Hey, look, hey, when I was skiing, no, he used to, in here. And he, and he, he snuck in the Living Legends, too. Yeah, look, hey, that I, part. Too. Hey, look. Hey, I said, that, I, remember when we went to... That's uh, a powerful nigga. Look, remember when we, was, uh, we went to uh, Special Ed? Oh, shit. Hey, look, especially that was sitting in the corner in that room. Remember he was sitting in that room? Dude, let's stick with this nigga, man. I ain't gonna talk about what he did, man. He was, <laughs> he was like, hey, we got too many stories, because like on tour, if I didn't have my, my daughters with me, that's his, that's my roommate and shit. And the nigga's like, this nigga, why? this nigga, we family. family. Hey, I, okay, nigga, I wanna ask you this on camera. What'd you get caught doing backstage at Northern Nights? Eating pussy. <laughs> oh, this nigga ate some pussy at a festival, nigga. I hey, I feel like this, nigga. You might want to get to know a young lady a little bit before you put your mouth down there, nigga. Right, we had had a we had a conversation. Oh, how long? A few minutes. We had talked about the future. How did? Uh, <laughs> well, what what uh, future? Me and her. What did it take for you to get into the middle of the pussy and eat the shit? Uh, a one, a two, a three. Next thing, nigga. Hey, hold up. Did you eat that booty hole? No, come on, man. You don't eat. Why wow, young niggas be doing that shit? She's on the festivals, man. What? They don't eat grocery. <laughs> 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 hey, uh, 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 eat a whole meal. Eat the whole meal, this nigga. They have some sausages though. What was that? Was that? <laughs> was it? She had some multi meal. <laughs> 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 nigga, why? This why this dude got the microphone. All right, now, now, why did I see you in the morning after that night, and you still had pussy on your face? Because there was not adequate um, showers in the area. <laughs> nigga, there was a shower right behind where you were sitting. Nigga. Also, also, it, I was far from the river, and um, I nigga, I didn't get in the river. That river was nasty as fuck, nigga. She was super cute though. What What's her name? name? What was her name? Does it matter? No, <laughs> I love this nigga, Aesop, the Let's black world. Right we gonna walk man. around. Blue. What up, though? What up, though? It's Blue reporting for fucking Back to Basics. I'm standing here with the tallest man in, in battle rap. What's your name? Melathon, the motherfucking time god. Nigga. Ah, time, nigga. Hey, man. Have you ever been in a battle situation where you wanted to steal on a nigga who was battling? One time, yes. Who was it and what happened? Well, I wasn't there, but I remember he said something about Cadillac Ron, and I didn't like it. Who said something about Cadillac Ron? I think it might have been, uh, I think it was Ron might maybe said that, or I forgot. It was someone, that, I think it was in Boston, but someone had said I will beat the shit. Who? Nigga, who? Who? I, I think it might have been, I don't remember who it was. I think it no, been nigga, Rome. tell me who. I think it might have been Rome. Hey, Rome, nigga, this is luck. This is 3.0, nigga. On oh, God, nigga, it's on sight, nigga. Don't you ever fucking utter Kyle like Ron name out of your motherfucking mouth, man. That's my brother, nigga. I'm going to fuck you up. You sure it's Rome? I think so. Nigga, fuck you, Ron, nigga. You fucking geek ass nigga. Little pencil neck ass white boy bitch, nigga. Don't you ever utter Colorado. That's a real ass man. That's a real nigga, nigga. You better never come to LA, nigga, and let me find out. It was a couple, I remember it was a couple people saying some shit, and I remember it made me hot. It made me hot. It made me hot. Yes. I love for Ron. I love Cal Ron, bro. I love Cal Ron, you should be here right now, Yo, my rest nigga. In peace, Ron. Hey, I remember he would be calling me from rehab because I was—I guess I was the only number he remembered, and I'd be talking to Ron, and, and I just—I just wanted to see him better. But I'm glad, you know what he I'm saying? He almost got better because he hooked up that European tour, and he went to go fly out, but then they—they they caught him on a warrant, and they put him in the airport jail, and then the nigga was hella sad that he missed the tour, then he went. Uh, that's another nigga I gotta fuck up. Whoever was with Ron when he went, that nigga's right. I don't even know if it's been handled yet. It might be already, but. I'm saying it on camera, dude. We got love for Ron, but back to you. Mm -hmm. What's the name of your crew, dude? Because y'all niggas is dope. 
Chamber Records, Cola Crew, Project Blow, King of the Dot, Fresh Coast, all day. Cola Crew, I'ma say this, nigga. These is the only niggas on the underground that's not struggle rappers because they out, they got bars, they got freestyles, they got hella niggas. They remind me of us. Thank you. I take that as a compliment. I love it. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Closest to it because they got all kind of different niggas and niggas got different styles and shit. And they raw. Color Crew, look out for it, y'all. Say one thing. What, you got something coming out? Uh, we got Local Heroes album coming out. That's me, my boy Namek, Archive. Uh, uh, Namek, shout out to Namek. Yeah, Namek, Josiah, and Spock Beats. Uh, Drop. It should be dropping. Uh, we're actually going into mystery, uh, mastering and all that shit right now. So. Sounds tight, bro. I'm, I'll probably uh, sometime at the end of this year, bro. Sometime at the end of this year. Look out for that. This is my boy Matt Malathon. We got way back, nigga, because you know I used to fuck with battle rap before niggas got all weird in it and just kept rapping about guns and never pulled none out, nigga. I had to leave it alone. I just can't invest my energy to write raps about another nigga. I'd rather make albums. That's just me, though. You do, you're doing good at it, man. Thank you very much, bro. You wait till you hear my new shit. All right, much love for this man right here. Thank you, sir. Thank you, bro. Blue. What's up? What's up? What's up? You here on Blue Show? We at Back to Basics live right here. And um, this man right here probably got more hip hop credibility in his pinky toe than most of the niggas here. <laughs> Introduce yourself. My name is DJ Mark Love, and I've been spinning for 33 years in Los Angeles. 33 years, nigga. What? 33. Wait, in the turntable, 33 is the revolution. 33, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. Bro, how did you get into being a DJ? Yo, all right, check this out. There was a record called The Adventures of Grandmaster Flash on the Wheels of Steel, and he was doing live mixing on vinyl, and I was like, what the hell is he doing? I'm very curious. And then, oh, oh I got the record. I got the record, and I heard it. I was like, what is he doing? What is he doing? I didn't know about mixtapes or nothing, so I'm like, what is he doing on this record? What is he doing? Then I got invited to an Uncle Jam's army party. And I got a chance to see. Yes. But but I got a chance to see Egyptian Lover and Bobcat on a one or two. Uh, the LA Sports Arena. Oh uh, it was it was them it was them Crips and Bloods there. <laughs> More Crips than Bloods though. <laughs> I got respect for Bloods because they live in a land full of Crips and they got to be a little bit harder. It's a little bit harder That's true. Blood. That's true. Unless you're a rapper these days. And there it is there. I'll let him say that. But he's got a point. But, yeah, but I've been doing this thing. I've been doing this thing for a long time. And let me just tell y'all straight up, man, hip-hop. It's like, let me tell y'all something, man. Come on, hip-hop. Y'all need to do some. Y'all need to do some damage control right now. Damage control for what? Because straight up, the way things are whirling right now in hip hop, there's questionable stuff happening. All right. And 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 I'm gonna tell you straight up. I'm 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 at a spot that my boy is throwing, which is no problem. I'm not gonna mention his name, because what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna put I'm gonna put it on blast. I'm at a spot right now that my boy is, that my boy is throwing, and I love it to death. I love him to death. But pay to play is something that's really killing the hip hop industry. And I'm sorry to say it. It's called, it's called struggle rappers, nigga. I can't stand struggle rappers. I would never pay a nigga a dime to rap, nigga. Are you crazy? I would throw my own show. What kind of shit is that, nigga? Why would you do that? Why do you pay to get on the mic before niggas wait? How do you feel about yourself? I'll tell you like this, though. I might pay $100 to open for Jay-Z. I pay $100. Because then I make that back times, trip times fucking quadruple billion off of selling merch off of that shit. And then I'd be famous. But you know what? Actually, I'm lying. I wouldn't do that shit because I have morals. I wouldn't do that shit. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. But the reason why I say that is because plain and simple, um, if you're going to do pay to play, I come from the old school where if you're dope, you get on the stage if you're dope. And pretty much... You come from the stage where if niggas was whack, they would get booed off the stage. That's true, too. Remember the good life. Please pass the mic. And I'm unity. Niggas be too PC. If somebody says the right rap, people just be like... And unity. And unity. So I'm just saying straight up, straight up, it's, it's, it's hurting the, the hip-hop out here in L.A. at least. 
and it really needs to like be controlled a little bit better. So that's all I got to say about that. I'm not dissing people that's doing it because some people that's doing it. If you in your field, fuck it, just come talk to Exactly. If somebody you know get their feeling hurt, I'm sorry, but basically. Nah, it's 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 hurting. It's hurting. It's hurting hip hop straight up. There it is. Go get a job at Amazon, nigga. You heard that? Stop the court, nigga. Hey, I like basketball, but I won't jump on the court with the Lakers and the Warriors, nigga. So don't get on our court, nigga. This is our court. Now, how did I end up interviewing him? <laughs> because you, because I love you. That's why I got love for this man. He embraced Mr. Journeyman back in the day when I say I say it wasn't. We didn't get. All the open arms, but a few people out here in LA, when we came back down here with our shit, he was one of them. Inducted me and Sunspot to Zulu. That's right. Brothers, I mean, I'm telling you, dude, I got much love for this man. And I want to let you know you're so dope right now because we need to give people their flowers while they're here. You know what I'm saying? Don't be trying to act like you love niggas when they're gone and shit. Let people you know you love them and you respect what they did. Mark Love, thanks for being on Bloop. Bloop! Uh, much love to this man. Always. Always. We went on our first bus tour with you. That's the first time we had a tour bus. We learned to put we learned how to fill up the bottle of uh, a, a fucking Grey Goose with water so you don't get too drunk on stage. We learned how to get inflatables, because these niggas had a big ass 40 ounce bottle. Don't leave, please. A big ass for if you guys want to go to the world, we can do it later. Go to the world with something. Oh, you gonna say here? And uh, they showed a, they had a, they had a big ass forty bottle on stage. Put it like this, chop, chop. And they were nice enough to let us like get the straggler girls. I mean, we couldn't get the best girls because we was just the opening acts. And they let us, uh, they let us rip them a couple times. We ripped you in, in Minneapolis. I mean, it's eight niggas. It happens to the best nigga. Jordan sometimes Jordan have an off game. Introduce yourself. My name is Tash, homeboy. This is Katash. Katash from the Alcoholics. One of the best rappers on the planet, nigga, like, who made me want to rap. I, I actually, like, I'm not going to lie. Some of my style is like a piece of this, nigga. I'm going to give it up to you like that. Hey, man. Hey, we can't hear shit. I don't know what he just said. I said some of my style comes from you. Oh. So he, 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 I said it. Not biting. I said I got influence and I turned into my own shit. I can't hear nothing, but I'll tell you what. This is the homeboy right here. And, hey, check it out. I appreciate the compliments. This is the realest dude you ever gonna see, man. We on the West Coast. I'm back on the West Coast now. Wait, wait, when is your new shit coming out? It's coming out next month. Task EP is called Raps on Tap. Just like the beard thing and the bars, it's called Raps on Tap. I'm gonna push that funk on you. Then I'm gonna come with the next app. The next EP is called Keep the Change. And then, what about the lick? The Iguanas I'm coming out before Christmas. What's it called? Right there, J Roll right there. Where? Where's J Roll at? J Roll over there somewhere, nigga. Where? Where is with his buff ass? Buff ass nigga. Lifting hella weights and shit. How you doing, sir? No, we got Wu Tang niggas. Oh, see? Wait, for real. What's your name, sir? Supreme. Supreme. Check it out. Is that West Coast Wu Tang? West Coast Killer Bees. Man, you better give it up. These niggas is worldwide. We in this bitch. We got Wu. We got. Wait, wait. I One of the songs I love. Coming out next What about the song with the fucking old dirty bastard? How that happen? And did he freestyle at first? We was good friends and everything. We was on the same record label. I told him, man, I said, when we started, I said, when we joined with Loud when, we, like with junkies. When, when we signed with Loud Records, it was like joining the gang. It we, is. Had the, we had the alcoholics exhibit, mob deep, and Wu Tang. Back when niggas used to get beat up. We do. And they used to roll together. And OD was my nigga. You know what I'm talking about. And that's what it is. He came to the studio, and yes, we freestyled all them bars. Yes. Oh, shit. Niggas freestyle better bars than you mumble rappers can write down, nigga. And you up, uh, nigga. That's what niggas was. Niggas. I, I, found, I found out why they mumble. Why they mumble? And look at yourself, son. They pants too tight. You got it. Oh. <laughs> they mumble because they pants too tight. Hey. Hey, 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 Introduce yourself, son. Peace, yo. Supreme myself, Wu Tang, West oh, Coast Killer Bees. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Oh, we doing it, though. Back. It's all on the liquid, though. We off that hey, liquid. But how about this, my though? Brother Taz, it's 24 years right here. 20 it's 24 years. Sister Asia. Sister Asia. Sister Asia. Jism. 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 High definition. West Coast. <laughs> he did beats on my, on my early shit, bro. Hey, Tash, say this. I, I got one more thing. 
he is a legend. I'm a living legend. Now. But tell me this. How did it feel working with Pharrell, Pharrell before the nigga blew up and y'all put it out first and then niggas followed your trail? I mean, hey, man. Game recognized game. Tyler recognized Tyler. You know what it is, man. Like, Pharrell and us, we had to come together. How'd you link with Pharrell? I called the nigga, man. Uh, how? Like, how did you know about him? At a club, they gave me his number, and I called him. Like as a fan, cause he was a fan. He was a fan of niggas, though. That's how he gave you a number. Very, 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 very inspirational to us, man. Because he told us, "Don't change your style." When everybody was going left and right and everything, gang banging on the mic, and this and that was popular and everything. He said, "Just make that music, like just like Biz Marky, make the music with your mouth, Biz." He said, "He said he told the licks. He said, just keep making that music, and we still here." And they still kept making this music, and this. This nigga's like from one of my favorite groups to this day. I still, I still bump shit, nigga. I played it on this show. I played my fucking Next Level, nigga. Are you kidding me? Next Level with Diamond D? What? That's him. Nigga, I know this nigga's bars. I was just with Diamond D came to Supreme Crib. What'd he do? Diamond D just came to his crib a couple. Diamond D came to his crib. Diamond D was out here? Yeah. Diamond D, no. We came to Vegas. Vegas. Uh, what? What y'all doing in Vegas? Oh, hold up, hold up, hold up. We had, it was, it, it was, it was, it was the liquids. It was the liquids. They're the original L's. They're original L's. We had day one, Diamond D, me, and Audio P. Got, did, did y'all make a song? Yes, we did. We yes, we did. We made 30 of them. Woo! Hey, wait, 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 wait. A lot can, of songs. Can, can I get you on a song? What? Can I get you on a song with me? Yes. <laughs> he said it right here. I'm going to get this nigga mad before I'm going. No, this one. I'll probably just from over there. I got it, though. I'm glad I'm on kind of with you. Every time I went to Vegas, I was looking for you. He was rapping since he was like a little nigga. He'd been like a slave for baby for hella long. Hey, the Charlemagne the God. Repeat. Because nigga, I'm telling the truth, nigga. It's just facts. I know. We're just, uh, I'm, we're this, this is my intro. Yeah. Nick, this man right here is who I talked to before I even accepted Blue. Because the only reason I did Blue is because I wanted to meet Julie because she was a fine ass looking uh, Armenian girl. That's why I hollered at her. I said I want to show on Dash, not because I wanted to be on Dash, not because I wanted to do a radio show, because he told me that he had to fucking raise money for K Day for advertising every week and it was fucking with his music. So why would I do something that fucks with my music? Introduce yourself. We just killed it. They're at the doors trying to stop everybody from leaving. We still got Living Legends and Necro in the house. It's going down. We just broke the stage in half. The sound system is broken. And uh, and just like the, the just like the battle between Disaster and uh, the homie, we had to do it on the next day in a parking lot. See you tomorrow. It's a, it's a wrap. First of all, I'm going to start off by giving you Breaking it down. Breaking it down. Thank you. I appreciate it. Hey, and make some noise for the West Coast Fire Marshal Bill. Lucky I am. He called me Fire Marshal Bill. That's not even a good one because I would call you Captain Morgan. <laughs> Captain Morgan. So come on, let's hop into this interview. Yeah, I got you. Hop. Oh, shit. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say that? Only I can do that. <laughs> yeah, you're good. I love Alex. But look, Alex, tell me this. Tell me this. Yeah. What has been your greatest moment in your career? Right now, after the show that we just did, we just destroyed it. Now, I'm just playing with you. Now, the greatest moment in my career, hey, one of them for real, though. Hey, right there, no, oh, yeah, for sure. Hey, 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 I'm making it happen. But, hey, hey, but on the real, one of the greatest moments was in 2003. 2003. Fool, this shit came from you? Eat the mint, my nigga. Eat it. Here, take all of them. Put them in your mouth. It's a man. So then, hey, in 2003, you got to let me tell the question. You got to let me tell the truth. In 2003, yo, in 2003, of Mexican descent went on its first real national tour because the living legends were headlining with idea and abilities, rest in peace. And you know what? The living legends had a secret vote to see if uh, OMD would go on the thing. And I don't know. I know that uh, I know that he made it happen, so I got mad love. That's one of the greatest moments in hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, and bus driver and Omid. So yeah, so I got mad love for Lucky I Am 3.0 Living Legends. This is my dude right here, always and forever, no matter what. Hey, hey, no matter what hat he wears, 
No matter how many, no matter how he walks down the street without a shirt and a baby dog, no matter what, you know what I'm saying? No matter how much he looks like Birdman from Cash Money, no matter how much he looks like Birdman, I love him. And it's going down. Living Legends, Visionaries Forever. Living Legends about to smash it. It's going down. Back to basics. Bloop. 3.0. Wow. Kamala. And we're out. Much love to Tomax. Wait, 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 wait. No, you got something coming out. What is it? What's wrong with you? Lospital, August 15th. Lospital, August 15th is my new album. It's dope. Water the plants. Say no, say no Spotify. Don't fuck with that. Nah, you can just get it off my website. I love Tomax.com. And I got a radio show on K-Day every Saturday night, Sunday morning. Wait, and possibly. Water the plants. What about where, we, where might we find a temporary home for Blue? Where at? Tem oh, man. 2Max Hologram, 24 hours. 2Max Hologram.com, platform collection, 24 hours. Yep. We might stop there for a second and shit. It's going down, dude. Live it. How many subscribers you got? Dude, 11th hour right now. 11th hour. We're doing it. I think we need to fuck with that. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Blue will jump on in and kill Let's do it. Let's do it. You know we're doing it. I'm going to call you. Hey, for real, though. All jokes aside, living legends, visionaries, family. No, meeting of the minds. Meeting of the minds, dog. Wait, wait, wait. Meeting of the minds. Who has the best verse on that song? Me! I got the best verse on there. Hey, dude! Hey, my favorite legends, shout out to my favorite legends, Aesop and Picasso, that's a line. You the best verse on that song. You had the best verse on that song? I'm trying to think. I'll tell you you got the best verse on that song. Oh, really? 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 I think I think it might be Merce, but you know what, nah, Eli. I like Eli, I like Eli. I like, I think Eli's verse was tight. You know what I'm saying? Yo, I had the best verse because I had fucking uh, Elemental had an overdub on my verse. You did, you did. I had the best verse. Hey, and I named the two legends that weren't on the song. And I was going to name a Rata. You, you, you named our, you named our, our weaklings. Oh. Wow. Wow. Hey. But you're only as strong as your Hey, voice. hey. No disrespect, of course. Hey, your boy's your boy gone totally out of limits right now. Hey, I'm just speaking the truth, man. I love them. Hey, dude. It don't mean, it don't mean that they're not dope and seeds, but they're like... It's all love. It's all love, G. Hey, hey, make some noise for Tommy putting on a shirt again, please, because we have children here. And it's not... Magic Mike extra ass. What is he doing? Yo. Yo, it's going down, though. No, where, 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 where's the daddy at? Where's the daddy at? No, let's talk to the boss right here. Uh, excuse me, uh, introduce yourself, ma'am. Um, Kathy? This is Kathy. She is Kiku's wife, right? Yes. You have beautiful children here. Who are you? Kina. 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 And thank you, Rachel's for my... That's Kina, right? Kina. And what's your name? Kinji. Kinji? You guys have wonderful names. What's your name? Evan. Evan. What's your name? Christian. Christian? Is this your first hip hop concert, Christian? Uh, yeah. It's actually, it's actually mine and my brother's because we've never, my mom never really ha takes us out a lot. She doesn't take us to concerts. What? Your mom doesn't take What's your name? Trinity. How old are you, Trinity? 14. Oh, my daughter's upstairs in the back. Sorry, she's 13 and she turned 14 on my birthday. She likes to say our birthday, but it's really my birthday, August 2nd. What's your birthday? December 24th. Oh, oh my goodness. What an awful day to have a birthday. It's right before Christmas. How do you do it? What? How do you do the birthday before Christmas? Um, you get both presents? You get double presents? Yes. Is it fun? Yeah. All right, do, do you kind of get sick of Christmas a little bit? No. You enjoy, it's just a wonderful time of the year, right? Yeah. What's your favorite subject in school? Writing. Writing what? Just like writing like stories or something like that. Who's your favorite author? Um, I don't know actually. Speak loud. I don't have one. Do you listen? Do you read Judy Bloom? Uh, yeah, I have read those. Tales of Fourth Grade Nothing. <laughs> what? Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing. Oh, I haven't read those. You haven't read that one? All right, on the count of three, I need you guys to say visionaries. All right. On the count of three, say visionaries. One, two, three. Visionaries! And then on the count of three, I need you to say living legends. Living legends, all right? One, two, three. Living legends. Are better. Yay!
Go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. Go back. Put the fist name, we're gonna do a count of three. On a count of three, we're gonna go yay. One, two, three, yay! Oh my. My name is I Killed MC. I represent a group called Jurassic Five. No, you talking about you? You represent a group that taught us how to do live shows professionally and practice no. and wear in-ear monitors? Uh, no, uh, no, 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 no. These guys right here. No, this guy right here. No. 1997. So oh, at the at the B-Boy Festival. Exactly. We're talking about 20 years ago. 20 years ago, these guys went to England. Hey, these guys was headlining. They head no for real. Headline. It was us, you guys, Invisible Scratch Pickers, and the Furious Four. These guys, no, yeah, no, yeah, but, they, but these guys, no, name. but these guys headline selling tapes. Yes, we did. They were selling tapes. I was like, yo, I got to get up on my game. These niggas is like on it. I love. We learned. We, we, we learned so much for real. I can't. I can't. We we all my whole crew to this day will always say that you know what I'm saying that trip in 1997. We seen y'all. Putting it down and stuff, you know what I'm saying? Yo, that was that that was like for real. That was like that 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 taught us a lot and stuff. Took us you know to how we they took us took us to London and we shit. We landed in Heathrow with twenty bucks, with twenty dollars in my pocket. The hustle was strong. Yo, that's that Northern Cali shit. Take. That's that Northern Cali shit. That's some some hustler shit. For real, that's that Northern Cali shit. Y'all was that's on some. That's what niggas don't know nothing about. Yo, they call some shit a mixtape, and it ain't even a tape. It's a mixed MP3, nigga. Exactly. You never even seen a tape, nigga. No, for real. You don't know. No, what these dudes, these dudes, like. these dudes had a box of tapes. Yo. The show was over, they was like out there slanging them up. I was like, yo. Hey, but do you know how I got my name? No. If you know anything about B-Boy festivals, you know that there's not a lot of women there. The only girls that come are like the B-Boy's girlfriends and grandfather girlfriends. I pulled a little bad little Chinese one, because you remember China back then was um, run by, Hong Kong was run by the British, by right. British. So she was there, and she was a little Chinese thing, and I pulled her. I, um, you know, still the deal. And then I was walking her out to a cab in the morning, and Kaz and all them niggas were standing out there like they was OGs back then. Yeah, exactly. You remember the niggas had on gators? Yeah, they had on gators and shit. Yeah. And they saw me put her in the cab, and then after she got in the cab, he was like, damn, man, how'd you do that? And I was like, and he goes, you lucky. And I go, lucky I am. Uh, That's how I got my name, nigga, from bagging a bitch in a, in a, in a, in a hard situation. Hey, that's crazy. You didn't know that, though. That's Blue. That's crazy. That's, that's crazy you said that because Grandmaster Cass told us, don't let the devil break you up. We just seen him at a show. He just, he just came and rocked with us in, said, in Brooklyn. But he said, he said, don't let the devil break y'all up. This is 1997. Well, living legends never breaking up. We might have took a hiatus. We took like 13, 14 years off, and nobody came and took our spot. J5 took time off. Nobody came and took their spot. I guess it's time for us to come back. Hey, man. Hey. Are y'all in the studio? We, we need, yeah, definitely, definitely. Now, well, you know what? Well, we got stuff that never came out. Oh. Ooh. That, you know, and that, to me, to me, that's more... More better. Because y'all been advanced. You've been you know what I'm saying? Game. Yeah, you yeah. You make timeless music, it don't matter when. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Exactly. That part, I mean, I mean, look at Beethoven. That part. You know what I'm saying? Timeless. If you, you know make timeless if, music, you make time, it, don't, it, don't it don't matter. matter. Exactly. It don't matter. You don't have to fit the trend. It, it, exactly. You don't got to chase uh, fucking fads and shit. Nah, definitely. And, and what a lot of MCs like our age try to do is they try to chase the young boys. Yeah. Don't chase them. Yep. That's they lane. Do what we do and do it. That's what we do. We do it best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they can never. They will never touch our live show, ever, yeah. ever. These niggas be rapping over their vocals. They might be right here. Nigga, vocals is playing while they rapping exactly. and shit. Like, exactly. nigga, I know you you made it on an instrumental, nigga. Is it that hard to get a, a copy of your instrumental? Exactly. Niggas act like they allergic to instrumentals. Right. <laughs> like, like, like why, why, you, why you don't want to rap? Or, what piano player? Play, what, but but, but listen, listen, what what piano player plays over his piano parts at a live show? Never. What horn player plays over his horn parts? So why the fuck you rapping over your vocals? What what type of sense do that make? The same reason they be mumbling. It don't make no sense and stuff. A lot of times they just see people do it on on, on video, so you think that's how it's supposed to go. So I I can't I can't I can't down y'all I can't down y'all, but that's not what you're supposed to do. I can do it before. Yeah, but but you know but you know why he 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 didn't have his instrument he didn't he didn't have his instrumentals and stuff. You guys have no excuse. You know what I'm saying? Today y'all ain't no excuse and stuff. You know what I'm saying? You can get that instrumental and 
you can hone your skills and make yourself sound good. Y'all just lax Practice, now. man. Y'all just lax and Come shit. Come to our shows and watch how we do it, bro. Yeah, yeah, I want to hear you. If I'm coming to your show, I want to hear you. I don't want to hear your voice. I could have just closed my eyes and listened to your CD at home and shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, bro. I mean, that's all. We, we're only saying this. We're not bitter because we did, we do. We got shows. Niggas can still tour the world. Don't, don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. Niggas is doing all right. It's not like we hungry. Look, nigga, I'm not hungry. Niggas eat, nigga. I'm not hungry. We're just, we just trying to tell you the truth because we care about y'all. I got daughters. I got daughters y'all age, nigga. Nigga, I got shoes your age. I mean, you know, you know what I'm saying? Oh, that part. All right. Much love. Say who you are again. I killed MC from the Jurassic Five. No, the mighty. I killed MC from the tiny mighty. No, no. <laughs> from the niggas who came from the area that we all come from around Lamert and all that shit, and it was not rapping about no bullshit, yeah. not rapping about gangbanging and shit. That's because right. you know, if you gonna gangbang, don't don't put it on wax, nigga. Just gangbang, nigga. Wait, nigga. Just go handle right. that shit, nigga. Go, right. go go handle it, nigga. Don't rap about it, nigga. Go do it. Because <laughs> to me, it, rapping about that shit is like self-incrimination, my nigga. Right. Why would you tell on yourself? And believe, nigga, the feds is watching. Much love. I love these guys. They have. Always. They're the only guys who can compare to us live show. That's Always. it. Man, they do. That's it. Taught us. Taught us. Stop telling it. You. I'm telling you. Stop it. 1997. Stop it. I can document. Stop it. It's Fresh 97. Stop it. It was in called Fresh 97. In the UK. How do you remember that? I, 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 it, it, I did too many drugs. I did too many drugs to remember that. Because if y'all touch my life, I'm, I'm serious. I'm look, serious. The hustle look was at strong, y'all. The, the, the hustle was strong, dude. Touched, touched they got life. off a of stage, man, and was just like slanging their tapes. They made money. <laughs> we went we, we, we went to London. I didn't have no money. I was like, God damn. How am I going to get some money and shit? You know we what I'm saying? making them pounds. That shit All right. Was, I yeah. love you, bro. I, I got to wrap it up, man. Thank you. Give, a, give people their props while they're here. Hey, I interviewed your wife and your kids. Key, 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 key. I interviewed your wife and your kids. I don't know. What? What? What you pointing at me for? Hey, look. Hey, this key code. What's that single that I found out before I found out who you was? What Raz has in there? What how it happened? Oh, uh, um, up above records. Yeah, up above records is a, a label that we formed ourselves. You know what I mean? Just like what made you want to form your own record label? Because because it because, because major labels were like Asian people don't like hip hop. Oh shit! They're the biggest fucking market in the world. You know about K-pop? Ben Baller told me about K-pop fans will shit on any, they'll, they'll fucking shit on any fandom. These niggas be having two million comments. So why, why'd why you do it? Man, just just because we wanted to release a, a fucking record and uh, Rhett was a- uh, come over here too, come over here too, Black. And Come over here too. And Rhett Malik was- Put on your glasses. Rhett Malik was doing scratches for Razkaz as well. Who are you? Who, me? Who are you? Key Cool, Visionaries Crew, Up Above Records. Now, why you gonna go over there and make the crowd all tired like that before I gotta come out and rap, nigga? Shit, cause you're gonna kill that shit too, fool. Hey, you know what? Since we were releasing our shit in 95, going up to San Francisco, coming down this way, Mystic Journeyman, we played our first Visionary show together. At at the DNA Lounge Whoa. for the bo for, for the bo for the bomb hip hop show. Oh. The show we were sitting outside. Oh my god, I don't remember. Oh, what? And the cops rolled up on us because we were sitting outside. You remember that shit? I do not remember. What year was this? What year was this? Why couldn't you get into your own show? All of us. All of us. I got that shit on video, dude. What happened? I mean, they call me Spike Key because I film everything. Spike Key films everything. And By the way, you have a beautiful family. I'll talk to your wife and I'll talk to your kids. Everybody here, we're all... Oh, you're his daughter! Oh, my God! You grew up! I, I told her, too. She likes to write. I asked her who's her favorite author. I remember you. You remember me? I used to be fatter. I'm sorry. I did. I was fatter. Oh, I got love for you. I remember you. We took care of you at a show before. Dude, bro, tell me, dude, what, what is the, um, what's your favorite memory of doing this music? What, what's the moment that stands out? Just, I know it's hard to pick one, but what moment stands out for you is like, mm, this is why I do it, this is why I love it, and I, it happened. 
I mean, one moment for me was the first time I got to go to my motherland, Japan, because of music. I never got to go there as a kid. Our family, you know, we can afford that shit. Yeah, man. That's a ticket. That's a ticket. First time I touched down, man, I, I like I literally tears saying, man, hip hop brought me to, to my, my grandparents' homeland, you know what I mean? So that's the reason why we got the, why we really love hip hop and why we're so concerned with the direction that is happening these days. What about your moment? Man, um, I would have to say two. Uh, one of them was way before, way before we started really rocking and 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 going to uh, uh, going to the spots and doing what we were doing, man. Me and this cat way back in the day used to kind of freestyle at at a at a at a spot that was kind of hip hop that I would say. Nah, man, it was it was it was kind of guy. It was a kind of guy. It, it was it was it was called CJ Barrymore's, man. It was right by it was right by the airport, right off of South Bay and Grand Avenue, in, 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 uh, in right out right off in the South Bay. Introduce yourself. Oh, sorry, I'm 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 Lord Zen, Realism, Visionary Crew, Riders. He sick off the dome. Right. You still got it too, huh? I ain't gonna put you on the spot, but cause you just did your thing. Y'all gonna watch the show. If y'all didn't come to Back to Basics, you missed it, cause Back to Basics is the real pay dudes. Ooh, I said that. I don't know, but pay dudes looks real unfamiliar to me this year. <laughs> Yo, Pequeno Wayne, Pequeno Wayne head, headliner. I mean, Little Wayne has pay dudes. He was rapping since he was her age, but I mean, but but he ain't for the pay dudes crowd. It's not the it's not the, it's not the kind of mess it's not the kind of message that our fans need. It just shows you it shows you where hip hop is gone and what people, in, in my mind, and I can only speak from my perspective, what they view and what they think is hip hop now, which is not hip-hop hip-hop is a totally different entity than what you perceive to be hip-hop so but this is part of the evolution and it is something that has become all-inclusive but man it's the youth are being misguided a little bit but i gotta give respect to all of it so you know it's here and 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 it's been here for over 30 years now so. it has much love to these brothers man thanks for talking to me on blue visionaries crew I almost got everybody. I even got your family. I talked to the little kids. Oh, what? She's going to be a writer, a famous writer, because I know you got bars because you came from him. I'm rooting for you. Just keep smart and stay away from, and stay away from them boys because them boys ain't about shit. They only want one thing, and they ain't got it for you. And, you know, you got a problem, you just let Uncle Luck, Uncle 3 point, I don't know. Any boy hurt you, I'm going to beat him up. I'm gonna beat his. I'm gonna beat his ass. Any boy hurts you, and they all will because they ain't no. They ain't no good. They ain't no good. And I'm gonna come out there and catch y'all. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Back to basics, part two. We're in San Diego. Down here, what's up? You're your guest three point nine. You guess your host three point oh. Uh, Riley, you need to go sit your ass down, you little gray ass nigga. Sit down, right there with your sister. Down, down, and stay. All right. Um, we're joined right now by someone who is, um, dare I say, one of the pillars. Oh, he, he made a noise like that. Um, introduce yourself. What's up? My name is Mr. Chalk from the world famous. Beat junkies holding it down. What up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up? C-A. All day. Where are you from, sir? I'm originally from a city called Bakersfield, California, which is an hour and a half north of Los Angeles, but i um, been in Los Angeles since 95, holding it down. No, I'm not. I'm certainly not. It's, it ain't where you're from, it's where you're at. You already know. What's up? Uh, how did I get my start? Uh, music was always around me. My mom was a big collector of records, and she showed me how to like put records on the turntable at an early age. Mama? My mom, yeah, my mom showed me how to put 45s on on a on a phonograph with that player. Thing? Yeah, with an adapter. So yeah, like, it'd be, it'd be I only a heard about that in the, in the archives. Like, I'm only 19 years old. It'd be a stack of 45s, and she'd have different stacks. So every what time was a stack. Type of record back then? Um, staple singers, I'll take you there, or, or James Brown, anything by Al Green, Wilson Pickett, a lot, a lot of those, Aretha Franklin, a lot of those records were being played in my house when I was young. 
I have a majority of my mom didn't let me mess with her records when I became a DJ because she used to always say, I don't want any of that scritchy scratchy on my records. That's what she would call it, scritchy scratchy. God rest her soul. I miss her to, I miss her to death, man. But yeah. Yeah, mom. Miss you. Still holding it down for you, mom. You already know. Yeah, she did. She, she didn't even know she was showing me the way either, you know, so it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. I don't know, man. I was it's over 40,000 maybe. Maybe more than that. I don't know. Uh, I, different places. I have some in my house. Um, I have some in my, uh, my mom and dad's old house, which is now my sister's house. And, um, you know, I have a little storage unit that's hidden somewhere. I won't say exactly what city or where it's at, but uh, got to, man. Like, I've been, I've been buying records since 83, man. So, you know, like, uh, oh, man, I don't know. A lot of places have been dug in, in L.A. a lot, man. So it's really like no secret no more. Aaron's Records used to be the place. Aaron's Records on Highland. You know, rest in peace to Aaron's, too. Yep. Yeah. It was a sad day, man, because, you know, everyone was going towards the digital the digital direction, and that's fine. You know, I'm, I'm with that also, too. But, you know, I, I didn't want the record stores to go away. I was down for the, the digital revolution, of course, but I didn't want the record stores to go away. And the few that are still around, man, it's, it's important to still support those, too. You know what I'm saying? So... Much respect. Huh. Yeah. Well, what was the first party you rocked in Los Angeles? First party I rocked in Los Angeles. You know what? Uh -oh. it, 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 it wasn't even a party. It was, I was down here. I was actually a dancer for an R&B group at the time. Uh -oh. And in the, in, the, in the early 90s, it, they, they never made it big. It was like a little independent group. A yeah, I was a, yeah, I'm a, I'm a B-boy. I come from the B-boy world. And then... I was breaking first, popping, breaking, and then I went into house dancing and all that. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Divine Styler, all that man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Soul Brothers, Soul Brothers. Yeah, you already know. Yeah. <laughs> only nineteen. Only nineteen. But yeah, I, I, I come, I come from that world, man. I come from the world of, of dancing. I was on Power 106. In fact, that's when me and you first met. You guys actually were down here in like early 90s, mid 90s, yep. and you guys came to the radio show with me and C Minus in the overnights. Remember that? Yep. Like long, long ass time ago. You guys hung out with us. That was our first time meeting you guys, and bam, look where we're all at now. Crazy. Beat Junkies, how did Beat Junkies start? Beat Junkies started in 1992. J Rock is the funky president, he's the one that started it. Yeah, that's everybody's favorite dude. Everybody's favorite DJ for sure. But you know, he wanted to start a he wanted to start a crew back in '92, and you know, uh, he just started hollering at people that he was rocking with already, such as Curse and Melody and and uh, Redmatic, um, Icy Ice, DJ What, uh, and then later on, you know, Shortcut, D Styles came into the play, Woo! Symphony, um, and then and then. Um, and then um, the last members of the crew, of course, was uh, DJ Babu, and I was the last member in 95. Word. Whoa. Yeah. Nobody says that? Nobody. I don't know why. I, I don't make those decisions. I was just happy to get in the crew and find my place. <laughs> you already know. <laughs> Be Junkie Institute of Sound, our school. It, it, that's our pretty much our 25th um, anniversary present to ourselves and for us to give back to the community that wants to learn how to DJ. Um, I mean, we, we teach the art of DJing, the craft of DJing, the history of DJing. Uh, whatever you want to learn. You can come in. You, if you're green, if you don't know anything, you come in and start from our beginner program. Or you can come in if you got some experience or, or advanced and just, you know, work on different scratches, different classes we have. We have, we have classes for scratching, classes for beat juggling, classes for creative mixing. And then, of course, just you know, like straight mixing classes also, too. Anything you need to learn how to do in DJ, we can show you how to do. Oh, man, just go to our website, man. BeeJunkieSound.com and get all the information. We work something out for you. We work something out for you. We got you. We got you all day. We got you all day. <laughs> Everybody. But see, that's our whole thing. Our whole thing at the at B Junkie Institute of Sound is build better DJs. We're, try, we're trying to build better DJs. 
Understand? Uh, understand? All right. Well, we I haven't I haven't encountered any of those. I've seen a lot of those on video. I haven't encountered any of those. But, you know, because I, I've been I've been in the game for a while, man. So people know, like, if I'm in the house or something, they're not, they, yeah, they're not gonna do that in front of me. <laughs> they're not gonna do that shit in front of me. I'll call that out real fast. <laughs> Word. Yeah. Speaking of rappers, I got to get on stage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm DJing for Mortal Technique tonight, Rebel Arms, man. You know what I'm saying? Go on tech, go rip it up with tech. Word. And thanks for being on Blue. Always a pleasure, man. Always a pleasure. You already know what it is. Too. Yeah, man. Stay in the shape, he's, son. He was the first one that leveled up. Yeah, he had to. Just, had what, to. What makes you get, it, get your... It was just time, man. I was getting older, and I was just like, you know what? I want to get in shape. I don't want to be lazy. You know, my metabolism's slow, so let me get it going. You know, eat right. I want to live. Oh, I, I like the, I like I like this thing called breathing. My heart beating. I like all that shit. So you know, you already know this music industry is bad. Sometimes, man, it gives you all the bad stuff. So yeah, yeah, all for free. <laughs> oh. Oh, and we out. Thanks for having me on the show. Peace, y'all. Ugh. Rip it. Thank you. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Hey, bro. This is day two of Back to Basics, and um, we down here in San Diego. I think it's like Comic Con going on, but I wasn't allowed in there because um, what I found out is Disney went on my Instagram and they fucking searched to find out who my homie was that worked for Marvel that was going to hook me up and then took that nigga's passes away. Now, Jack. <laughs> because sometimes I say a little bit too much, Jack. You know, uh, yeah, sometimes, yeah, sometimes it's best not to say too much on social media. That's how they knew who I was, and that's how they knew that I was going to. <laughs> well, that's how I get multi-billion dollar companies, like, looking in, peeking on me. Hey, if I turn up messing, wait till you get the manifesto. I'm going to write it after I get out the loony bin. Hey, introduce yourself, sir. My name is Sig Jagging from the motherfucking side. Can I cuss? My name is Sig motherfucking Jagging from the motherfucking cycle motherfucking round, baby. I'm gonna do it like this. Hey, Jack, when did you start rapping and what made you want to start rapping? I was 13 years old and uh, I'm from Pico Union. I'm from downtown LA, the Pico Union district, which is now known as. Yeah, yeah. Um, the heart, the heart and soul of Los Angeles. I'm from Pico Union. My boy came up to me and, and uh, it's my, it my dog. He was like, um, he goes, hey, check this record out. We're like 13 years old. His uncle was a DJ. He brought this 12-inch single. Some Miami rapper named Chulito, right? Chulito. And it was like, he was rapping over like some 2 Live Crew beats, but he was rapping in Spanish. And it's the first time we ever heard anybody rapping in Spanish. This is before that. And he, and he was like, don't fucking, I, is this, can we, can we delete that? Can we delete? No. No, but really it was before that. And fucking, uh, and he was like, he showed me the record, and he was, and I never heard nobody rap in fucking Spanish. And he was like, "I could rap better than that." He pulled out a little, he pulled out a little piece of paper from his back pocket, a little thirteen-year-old Mexican motherfucker, and he started fucking rapping the shit in Spanish. And I was like, I was yeah, and I was blown away, bro. I was like, that's dope. You know what I mean? Why did you do it? Because because that. Nah, that was my fucking dog. That's like my brother. That was my road dog. So so whatever he's doing, I'm doing. Whatever I'm doing, he's doing. So when he. We're from downtown LA, from Pico Union. Oh, we didn't gangbang. I mean, okay, <laughs> all the homies. Now we have family from both sides of the fence. In Pico Union, there was a there was there's a big fucking war going on, and I got family on both sides of the fence. So I never got involved in none of that shit. It is because everybody knows where everybody lives, and everybody knows where everybody helped everybody's moms carry fucking groceries from the from the market, bro. You know what I mean? My dad told me he was gonna kick my motherfucking ass. That's how niggas stay out of gang. And hip. That's why they join. That's why they join Marvin. That's why they join Mansfield. Cause I was more scared of my daddy. And and hey, and and fucking hip hop music, but shout out shout out to my shout out to my brothers from Burlington and from 18th Street and Pico Union. You know. So um, you know you made a song produced by mother. I want to say Mugs or somebody. It's a fucking anthem. It's like a.
I, it's an anthem that makes. When these when these niggas used to play it in tour gym, van, I would start socking the back of feet. <laughs> What's that fucking song? You know that song? Which one? Like, hey, we got a few of those. Yo, we got one called sh so We got one called Showdown. Fucking lit. <laughs> we got a few of those. It was a Showdown, Psycho City. Fucking uh, theme of fucking like the, the uh, it sounds like fucking church moves, just like some uh, orchestra shit, and it like builds up. Nigga, it's so. Dude, man, you know what I'm talking about. You know, bro, I got Showdown, I got Psycho City Blocks, I got. Yeah. You are somebody I know that makes music that gives people feeling. How do you feel about that, making music that actually touches people? Because some people make shit and they're like, eh, eh. But people who make shit that makes people feel shit, that's rare. So how did you tap into that energy? It's the only type of music that we've known how to make. It's the only shit that we do. We never fell into what was going on, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like, Tumex took us to fucking to the good life. You know, we're teenagers and shit, right? So, so we were over there at the good life when we were teenagers, and we we're the only Mexicans there aside from OMD. You know what I mean? So, and then we we're dressed like cholos and shit. So, so, you know, so all the homies were like, you know, yeah. So, yeah. So all the brothers were like looking at us, kind of laughing and shit. Look at these motherfucking Mexicans trying to rap. You know what I mean? And then we busted. They were like, oh shit. Yeah, yeah. And then you know, but it. it we 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 never gave a fuck about what anybody else is doing, you know. We we're never talked about in the hip hop community because we always chose to be outside of that shit. We're like we're gonna everybody's here. We want to be here you on our own. Lane. And, and yeah, and we do our own shit and we create our own shit and, and we make music that we want to make. And that's the only type of music that we know. I mean, I don't know how to put it any any other way. Is that's the type of music that we know how to make? Is everything that I write, everything that I make has to mean something. Otherwise, I feel like I'm, I can't dumb my shit Who's down. You know? Fuck you yeah. Habit, bro. Fuck yeah. Like bro, I fucking... Niggas I, don't know. Niggas, <laughs> on, are get, niggas who are good at rapping, niggas, they know, they read book, they have read books. Yeah. You niggas that... They, 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 it's obvious Nowadays niggas that's not true. Books. Nowadays that's not true. I mean, what, what do you mean? But when it mattered, yeah, yeah motherfuckers, the you MCs, were MCs were smart. It's smart. You had to be smart. I, mean, I wrote it. I, read books. Now niggas like only seventh read. grade. Niggas, they think in 140 characters or less. Seventh seventh grade. I wrote an essay that got me a trip to Russia. Well, it was supposed to get me a trip to Russia, but they had a civil war. They split into the provinces, oh. so I didn't get to go. Oh. Seventh grade. Eleventh what was, grade. What was the essay about? It was about what would you do if you were in Russia for 10 days with what a camera and a pen. Was a, it was a classroom what assignment. Was the essay? What's the it was a no. <laughs> I was I, I, I was the essay. <laughs> you like that yeah, hey, this guy cracks himself up, bro. Eleventh, <laughs> eleventh grade. My my English teacher wanted me to write for a magazine. Graduated three point five plus. I'm a smart motherfucker. English, oh, English la people. language arts, language tell arts and math, people. homie. You can't. Wait, wait. Yeah. So you look at the camera and tell people it's not. It's not. It's cool to be smart. Stop okay. fucking around. Don't be stupid. That shit ain't cool. I tell my kids this shit all the time. Being stupid ain't cool. So cool. so stop pretending to be stupid because you ain't. My kids ain't stupid. Yeah. Stop stop pretending to be stupid. Being stupid ain't. Now, yeah. Now, when does smart become not cool and not in fashion or not is not popular to be smart or people make fun of people for being articulate and shit like that and be like oh you're talking so white like that. No, I know. I know like that. Remember we're kids. Yeah, like, it was the fucking like, nerds. Oh white. fucking nerd. Man, them fucking nerds grow up and they drive Maseratis and 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 hey and and the cool mother and the cool motherfuckers clean their bathrooms. <laughs> you know what I mean? Real spit, bro. How did you hook up with Cypress Hill? How did you meet? I was at uh we we were doing uh, we used to do a lot of college shows, um when we were teenagers, the summer that I graduated high school, we did a uh, um, it was a fundraiser called End Barrio Warfare. It was to end neighborhood warfare because a lot of gang activity back in the nineties. Crazy. It was cracking. How different it was to live in LA at those times, man. Like, I tell people, like, kids, they don't understand. They can wear anything, like, any kind of color. Like, I had to, like, choose what I wore depending on where I was going in the city. Yeah. Yeah, because you got, because whether or not you might have to face a problem. Shit. Matter of fact, today, I was standing on the corner and we got out the car at, on fucking, um, in North Park, and a nigga walked up and was like 3.0. And I was like, I thought he was a fan. And he's like, I was like, what, you know what's up? He's like, no, nah, Harlem Thurs, right? I was like, oh, oh shit. Whoa, <laughs> no. <laughs> Not that. <laughs> hey, but. Hey, now, you don't. 
He doesn't, he doesn't have to worry about what color he's wearing because he don't wear shirts no more. <laughs> I haven't seen this motherfucker with a shirt in years. You don't understand because I spent years being that nigga that would get in the pool with his shirt on. <laughs> That's what it is. That's what it is. <laughs> I ain't there yet. I'm still working progress. Wait till you see him rolling. Wait till you see him with a back roller. Oh, is it, I'm about to pull it out in a second, bro. Don't do it. He, Don't do it. I pulled it out, and it, this, this nigga's like, what are you doing? I was like, my back. I'm old, man. Don't do it. How old are you? I'm old, old enough to drink. There we go. I'm old enough to drink. I'm a 75 baby. There we go. See? See? Old niggas do it better. Telling you the truth, man. Stop playing because every other genre, like old rock dudes and rock gods, old did the old music, blah, blah, blah. hip hop. So yeah, it's like you're washed. Yeah. If you like over what you washed, what? It's not, but that doesn't that's not happening no more. Like uh, hip hop has gotten to a point now. The music's you know it ain't that young anymore. It's getting to a point now where they're actually giving respect to the uh -huh. to the older rappers. You know what I'm saying? Where before they wouldn't be like, oh you're oh. you're an old motherfucker. Oh, you're an old rapper. Oh, oh old head motherfucker. I'll oh, fucking I'll rap, I'll you fucking niggas, murder you. Circles around you little niggas, dude. This dude is... Hold on, hold on. <laughs> That's you rapping, homie. That ain't me. <laughs> but not even that. This niggas can't even spit that shit live. They got to spit it with the track on. This niggas spit some mumble rap with the fucking vocals on it. What's wrong, nigga? Just mumble, nigga. You can do it. <laughs> Whoop. <laughs> gang, 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 gang. <laughs> Skirt. Whoop, whoop, skirt. New song right there. There it is. Hey, let me get, let me get that audio, homie. Let me get that audio. My, hey, my kid, my kids will love that shit. With a big ass beat with a hella high hats, nigga. We gonna have a hit, nigga. Let them fucking just press it down, homie. Just. Man, I love that motherfucker, bro. Merz, you know, Merz is a fucking honorary Mexican, bro. You know, he's, oh, I know. he's an honorary Mexican, yeah. That's why he makes five songs about dating Latina chicks. <laughs> every, every album he comes out with, it's, hey. about, it's about the, uh, the essays. They want to beat him up because he's fucking his little sister and shit. Hey, he knows who buys records. Hey. Oh, smart dude. Shouts out to Reverie. <laughs> <laughs> That's my girl, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah piece of Reverie. Uh, what's a gavel and holler at me? Hey, you better cut that shit out. You know, I mean, no, I'll take her to the movies. That's all. <laughs> She's fine. She's, too. Oh, she's beautiful, fine. too. She's and beautiful. She wrap her ass off. That's the whole thing. Yeah. The dope MC is not even pimp. Don't say MC. I hate that shit. That's just fucking retarded. Both, both of my homegirls are beautiful, and they're fucking very talented. And they're killing. I said, killing? No, they be international as fuck. They go to Europe like every other fucking month, man. They're killing out there. They big. You. Cypress Hill. We look, got our topic. Yeah. Well, I met him. Okay, so I was, I graduated summer. We did this embodied warfare thing, and um, be real, be real was there because some girl was promoting this fucking movie called Mi Vida Loca, right? I know and that he was, movie. Hey, I love that movie. He was, I don't know, he was there. That was, you know, he was supporting the movie, and well, I know you know, <laughs> I don't know nothing about that. But but I was we were there we we were there I don't know bro hey I don't know cut it out man so I was there hey cut it cut that shit out shit's still on hey fuck it so <laughs> so he, nah so he was there and he saw us and he hit up the, uh, some homeboy from Land Alliance his dude named Menace he was like who are those guys you know he was like let me talk to him he introduced us and shit and he was like who are you guys fucking with we're like we ain't fucking with nobody he's like let me fuck with you guys. He was he was dropping fucking Black Sunday at the time, insane in the brain. They were on top of the world. We we're like, yes, 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 yes. But we were already bumping the first album on that shit. Oh, he took us on Smoking Grooves, '97. That was fucking dope. Twenty thousand people a night. Us barely fucking starting. Shit was crazy, huh? The wildest fucking. Oh, come on, no. Huh? Come on, no. Too many baby mamas. You know how many? You know how many baby mamas? You know how many kids I got that are watching this shit right now? Come on, bro. I'll tell you. Nah, you know. What? Happened? What? Uh, how many? How many? I'm all pregnant. I got oh, nine kids. Shit, I got nine kids. Fertile. Hey, Mexicans do it. You know, Mexicans can nut on your finger and you get pregnant. Oh, fucking wink at you. Every time they wink at you, they're shooting something at you. I mean, you better watch it. <laughs> Wait, come on, give me one. Here, must. One story. Huh? One story. You know stories, bro. Damn, bro. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Wait, nope. All the rappers. Out of all the rappers who get the most, I don't fucking know, bro. That's called dry snitching, homie. Ah!
Come on, man. Come on, man. You're talking to a Mexican, bro. I don't know who they're with. I don't know what they're doing. I, mean, I ain't putting nobody on blast like that. <laughs> hey, well, I don't I don't have an opinion. Oh, shouts out to Big Duke, by the way. Shouts that motherfucker got pussy, though. Oh! Yeah, hell yeah. Shouts out to Duke, bro. Twisted just because he's in the wheelchair. Oh, well, I didn't. I was talking about now. You try snitching right now. I'm, not, I'm just saying, don't get, just don't, you know, don't count him out. No, Duke always has a, uh, some fine lady with him. Damn near. Dude, what was the, um, did you ever get booed before on stage or heckled? Nah. Never. Nah. Never. Uh-uh. Never. <laughs> Never. Never. Somebody threw something at the stage one stone. We jumped off and fucked it. <laughs> People got beat up and shit. Yeah, people got beat up before. <laughs> but we're peaceful guys. We're peaceful guys. I think it was in Atlanta. Or, no, it was in Atlanta. It was like in South Carolina or some shit. Somebody threw some shit on stage and Duke jumped off. Yeah. Fuck. And then somebody tried to steal some shit in Buffalo. Twice in Buffalo. Two times in Buffalo. Man, they got some thieves in Buffalo, bro. Because two times and shit. One time I was with Cypress and the other time it was us. And they just, just people got beat up. It was, we were, we were the Mexicans there. I know. No, in, yeah, in Chicago, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even know that. Milwaukee, Wisconsin, was Indiana. They put us in like a little, we call it a moti, nigga. It's a moti, nigga. It's like the motels where niggas pay week to week and shit. Somebody put us in the moti, and nigga, it was in a barrio. I was like, what the Chicago? What about what about a, a motel in fucking in in the in the, in the middle in the middle of Mexico and shit? After after hey after hey after hey after, after the cartel went and pistol whipped the promoter because they knew we we're because they knew we were coming to do a show and then when the cartel left and got their money the cops came in and served them with papers and taxed them too and then they brought us in and then we stayed at this fucking motel and we're like. And we all kicked it out. So we, we no, we we all kicked it. We all kicked it outside of the fucking room. Oh yeah, we kicked it outside of the room. And we we're like, all right, if we get kicked, we're all getting kidnapped. You know what I mean? Fuck that. Yeah. We had no sound man. They fucking beat up the sound man. Yeah. I got a story about you a long time ago. No, it's about me. God damn, this nigga got me on a chair, man. If you ever had your shit pushed in, you ever did a movie? Who's interviewing who? Nigga, I don't know. You didn't be with me. Hey, a long time ago, Rob won West in Peace. I went to fucking um, Tijuana with him, and they were, we were going to a Psycho Round show. I told this story before on Blue, but I never told it in front of you because you was the nigga doing the show. They took me to the clubs in Tijuana. You know the clubs where the niggas is like, there's bitches there and shit, but then they like get you, and the nigga like get the tequila. What's up? And put your head back. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Niggas got me fucked up. And then they bounced on me. Wow. They left me. And I was I never been to Tijuana you before. Shut up, nigga. I was too fat to not wear a shirt, nigga. God damn, nigga, make me feel self-conscious. So then somehow I found my way to the show. I got to your show in Tijuana. And let's just say it was full of those papers that you wrote to go to Russia. Full of them. Full of them papers. Them essays. It was full of essays in there. And I walked in and I was like the only, I was Negrito. Like that game, what's that game called? Uh, La Turia. I was Negrito. I walked in and it looked like the Negrito card came up. And niggas was like, everybody like, it's like, you know, like when the record screen, like, like the, the music stopped. Niggas was like, they looked at me and I was like, and then, like, no one said it, but they was like, nigga, don't you dare talk to one of these hyenas up in here. <laughs> <laughs> but I made it out alive. Hey, y'all, Blue, this is Blue. Me, because you were performing. Oh, that's it? Yeah. Get the fuck out of here, bro. <laughs> Let's go on. Come on, man. <laughs> What's the hyper show you ever did? Your favorite place to perform, hands down. Everywhere, 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 everywhere. The crazy, what the fuck oh, is that? Shit, niggas, oh shit, somebody, somebody's hating. Somebody is hating the fire alarm. alarm. Oh Damn. shit. Uh oh. I think the show, I, I think we gotta cut up. We gotta cut the, see what happens when Jack gets on the mic, nigga, gets so hot, he gets to set the fire alarm off, nigga. We gotta get him out of here. We gotta get the fuck on. Say peace, yo. What you got coming out, bro? Peace out. Well, I just dropped the uh, War Porn Industries project with Everlasting Divine Styler. Hold on. Shh. 
Okay. I just dropped the Warport Industries project with Everlast and Divine Styler. I just dropped Divine Styler, Divine Styler and Everlast. We just dropped the project called Warport Industries. I'll give you a CD before you leave. That shit is hard as fuck. Um, I got you. Got you. Got you. I just dropped Psychedelic, uh, Mexican Independence Day, September last year. I'm working on my Spanish album. I'm producing a record for Bamboo. I'm doing this shit. Come on, homie. Come on, homie. Come on, homie. I'm sure there is. My dad always told me there's always somebody younger, better, and better looking than you, and I believe him. But uh, that doesn't mean I'm doesn't mean I ain't the shit though. I'll kill I'll kill a motherfucking Mike in Spanish, baby. Got it. <clears throat> Hell yeah, for real. I'm fluent, homie. I sp I learned how to speak Spanish before I learned how to speak English. I didn't speak English till I got into fucking kindergarten. I'm a fucking wetback. No, I'm not a I'm not a wetback, but I was ESL. ESL. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> I love you, Murs. I ain't laughing at you, bro. I'm laughing with you. <laughs> That's my motherfucker, bro. I love him, man. Love him and his whole family, bro. Yeah. Hey. I love that. I love. I love your padrino, man. He's the shit. Man, look. Love you, brother. Yes, sir. Much respect, bro. Hell yeah. Thank you for your time, bro. Yeah, yeah, please. I got you. Tell me what size you wear. I got you right there, bro. Yeah. What a Harlem what a Harlem wear. They they wear blue or Harlem wears blue, right? Harlem wears blue? <laughs> got your blue. I got a blue strip for you right there, homie. Blue. What's up, blue? What's up? What's up? Come on, homie, come on, homie. <laughs> Pico Union, baby, LA all motherfucking day. Psycho Realm, sick jacking. Lucky I am. Is that what you would be saying if nigga ran up? Like, no, nigga, I swear ain't no crap. No, you don't understand. It means 3.0. Lucky I am, nigga. I'm a rapper. <laughs> no, nigga, that means 30s, nigga. Bow, bow, bow. All right, that's not going to happen. It's not going to work. <laughs> no, it used to be dangerous. All right, we out. Bloop. Tell me when you're ready. To get the... What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? It's 3.0 downstairs at um, Back to Basic Part 2. Um, can you introduce yourself? My name is Ashlyn Corre. Uh, where are you from, ma'am? I am from Antioch, California. Oh, what's your bra size? Guess. Something D? 32 Triple D. 32 Triple D. Can uh, we get a shot of this? Um, how are they natural? How? Are they natural? Yes, they are. Uh, do you have back problems? I do have back problems. I got a formula you can use because your back. I have back problems too. Yeah, because I got some 32 Bs. Hey, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, how, who did you come here to see tonight? You guys. Uh, excuse me, uh, who was you guys for the camera? Uh, Living Legends. Oh, so Living Legends does have uh, women fans? Oh, many women fans. Female fans? Female. When did you learn about Living Legends? How old were you? I was a freshman in high school. So 2007, I went and saw you guys in San Francisco. Uh, have you ever hooked up with one of the members of Living Legends? I have not, no. <laughs> Yet? Oh. <laughs> Uh-oh, 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 uh -oh. Essence. You said yet, yeah, right? I said Well, we're right here, so we're just going to give a kiss for Blue. And then we're going to end it, and he's going to walk you upstairs. Here we go, on the count of three. One, <laughs> two, three. Okay. Ah, uh, Blue. Thank you. Oh, my God.